And welcome back to our King 5 political special, Northwest Politics, the Midterms and Beyond. Earlier today, Governor Jay Inslee stopped by the studio to talk about his plans next year for Olympia and his own political future. So, Governor, thanks for being with us today. You bet. Thank you. Yeah. So next year you have expanded majorities mm -hmm. in both chambers in Olympia. What are some of your top priorities and do you plan to reintroduce your carbon legislation? Well, we have a lot of great things we're going to do, and now with this new majority, and it is an expanded majority, I think people did send a message they want uh, us to heal the divisions in the country and move our state forward. And I'm excited about it because we can build on our success. We've been named as the best business climate in the United States and the best place to work in the United States. So now we can have a chance to build on that. We need to uh, reform our mental health care system because we know mental health challenges are in all of our families. We need to address uh, some of our educational opportunities on early childhood education. So we get those little three and four year olds ready for school and also give people a whole new avenue to career advancement in a career connected learning system and through apprenticeships. And I'm very excited uh, about this. We know we have a housing uh, issue we've got, to, we've got to deal with. And we know we've got some fantastic opportunities to build clean energy jobs across the state of Washington. And I'm excited about that. So we have lots of tools we intend to use, and I believe we will be successful uh, adopting a climate change measure which will grow clean jobs in the state. Whether that involves some carbon charge or not remains to be seen. That is one of the tools in the toolbox and I'm excited about figuring out which tools work. I had a, a good meeting today with legislator leadership and I'm very confident we're going to have perhaps the most robust effective climate change policies uh, when we get done by the next session. So I'm excited. And how did you feel feel about Initiative 1631? Because voters in every other county except for King and Jefferson mm -hmm. said no. Well, uh, voters sent a couple messages. One, the majority did not like this particular carbon measure, but this is just one of a hundred different things that we could do. But they also sent a message that they want us to be a science-based clean energy based climate change fighting state because they sent somewhere between nine and eleven legislators new legislators all of whom are committed to fighting climate change we saw the fires in paradise california a town of twenty five thousand wiped off the map we know we have to act on climate change and i think the message we heard from people is come up with a good climate change thing that makes sense grow our clean energy jobs, and I think we will be doing that in the next session of the legislature. Governor, you, you got some frequent flyer miles in <laughs> during this election cycle, campaigning on behalf of Democratic gubernatorial candidates. What do you think, what's your perspective on why it was uh, important for Democrats to flip some of these state houses? Well, a variety of reasons. One, it's a benefit uh, from Washington's standpoint to have partners in these other states, partners that can stand up against the Trump administration when they're doing things that are hurting our state, partners when we adopt policies on clean energy and the like. So it's important for our state, but it's important for the nation to be able to stop the gerrymandering that has gone on that has been so insidious that really is a virus on democracy, which prevents people from being able to choose their own member of the U.S. Congress. By having Democratic governors, and now we flip seven seats, this is the largest uh, uh, uptake in 36 years, so we're very happy about it we'll be able to stop some of that, that gerrymandering. And third, on these is other issues on a national basis, look, we need, we need leaders who will help unite us instead of divide us. We need leaders who will bring some degree of, of uh, commonality rather than chaos. We need leaders who won't fan the flames of, of anger. And governors are very important in those positions. So I could not be more thrilled. Uh, this was a huge night for both the Democratic Party and America, I believe in trying to right the ship of state. We know that we are uh, in risk right now because some of the chaos coming out of the White House. And I'm really glad that uh, I, was be able, I was able to play some part in that success. So I'm excited about the next couple of years. That sounds like a campaign speech. <laughs> yeah, you haven't ruled out a run for president in 2020. When are you gonna make up your mind? Uh, you know, in the next couple of months, we'll be listening to people and, and give some thought to that. So, but and right what goes now, into that decision? Oh, uh, a lot of different things. Uh, uh, I do know we need a new president, and I think you know that uh, I've been able to stand strong on some con core convictions that I think represent Washington state values. 
And uh, if I were going to run, uh, I assume it would, be, it would be based on those values. But right now, we're, I'm still trying to get some people elected. We've got to make sure we count these votes up in these last two legislative seats. So you haven't rented office space in Iowa City yet? <laughs> no, we're, <laughs> we're still uh, counting votes in uh, Mount Vernon. <laughs> and would you like to make an announcement on this show? <laughs> yes, I'm excited about uh, your future. And that's a tease. We'll talk that's about a that. Tease. We'll talk about later. that. Later. But at let's the end talk of the about show. 2020 uh, with Marco and Bill. Uh, what do you think the landscape looks like, both on the federal level with a candidate potentially like Jay Inslee or others, and also here on the state level? I think the Democrats are very strong going into 2020. They have the momentum from the House. They have a lot of Republican Senate seats that have to be defended. And the president's current polling is, you know, at or below 40 percent. So they have a, a good push. Do you think Governor Inslee runs? He's already getting mail in Des Moines. So I think he's <laughs> definitely looking at running. He has to test the waters financially if the donors want to support him and if other national organizations like him. And if they do, yeah, I think we'll see him run. I thought it was telling at the very end there where he said we still have some votes to count. And he was referring to Iowa City and not Bellingham or down in uh, uh, Gig Harbor. Well, boy, in 2020, if he was to leave office, there'd certainly be a vacuum in Olympia. Well, there's a vacuum in Olympia <laughs> right now, regardless of whether he leaves office or not. What does that mean for the gubernatorial yeah. race, though, on both sides? Well, on the Democrat side, it's widely speculated that the Attorney General and the King County Executive are seriously looking at it. On the Republican side, there's a handful of us who have statewide name ID, and maybe there's some people in the private sector who are looking at it, but there's not a lot of chatter. I think a lot of people wanted to get through the midterms they want to get through this next legislative session, and then probably you'll have folks reevaluating the landscape. What do you think? Well, I think that there is, a, you know, for the Republican Party, the bench is pretty shallow right now, but I don't think a fresh face would be bad either. So if they had a state legislator that wanted to take the shot, that would be the year to do it. The, the key is that there is momentum. I'm not disagreeing with Marco, but there also is this void or gap in Olympia that could be filled. I mean, we have an education situation where people are paying more, but they're not seeing results. We have an opioid crisis. We have a mental health system that's at the bottom of our nation. And housing. And housing. And then you take housing and mental health and put them together and a broken foster care system, and you have homelessness, which is spilling out into the streets. These problems have gotten worse over the last six years. So the voters are going to have to decide whether they want more of the same or whether they want a new approach. And I think that discussion is going to be framed over the coming months. Let's turn now to Washington's federal delegation and what the new majority means for some of uh, the Democratic members of Congress. Congressman Adam Smith is on track to take over as chair of the House Services Committee. Congressman Rick Larson has his eye on chair of the Aviation Subcommittee. Representative Susan Del Bene and Denny Heck are both running to chair the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Congressman Derek Kilmer running to chair the New Democrat Coalition, which is a pro-economic growth Democratic group. And Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal running for co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. She's also a member of the House Judiciary Committee, and we caught up with her recently to ask what investigations that committee is already talking about. We are going to have to immediately make sure that we protect the special counsel's investigation um, and make sure that we allow him the full latitude to get us the results of that investigation. We have been asking for investigations that are around um, specifically the emoluments clause and the issues of conflicts of interest that the president has continued to have because he hasn't given us his tax returns. We don't know what financial interests he has. So what do you think this looks like next year in a divided Congress? Well, the country is really split, and you see that in these midterms. Uh, the, the Democrats picked up, where are we, 35, 38 seats, Marco? And I think we're 36, yeah. 36, and in a normal year, it's 14 to 38, so this is the high end of the normal range, but it's within the normal range. But they're clearly going to have the votes to move forward and challenge the president on both politics and policy. On the other hand, you can send a lot of stuff over yeah. to the Senate and it can just die. So I don't know that we're going to, unless some statesmen step up, statesmen and women step up and say, we need to do something on health care and provide certainty. We need to do something on infrastructure. But I'm not sure I see that motivation right now. Final word. I, I think a lot of energy, the Democrats coming out of a very demoralized 2016, you're going to see that charge into the next year. All right.